for St. Martin of Tours. We're so glad that you could join us uh, for the children singing once again. Uh, it is Women's History Month, and um, today we're singing the tune by Holly Near. Holly Near uh, was about Mother Mary's age, and uh, she's been singing uh, publicly since she was about uh, their age, uh, you know, very young person, very prolific uh, composer, uh, did a lot of music in the civil rights movement. The reason, the primary reason that we chose Holly Near, uh, because not only did she do music out of civil rights and social justice, um, but she, she was a, a white person doing music out of social justice and civil rights, LGBTQ rights, and she worked always with people of color. When I do, I was telling the young people, when I do social justice work, the most important thing for me is to do it in a multiracial way. And that was uh, one of Holly Near's specialties, and she sang in a multiracial way. Uh, so if you would like, you may join us Gentle, angry people. You guys doing okay? We are a gentle, angry people, and we are sick. Thank you. 
Martin of Tours as we celebrate the, sec the third Sunday of Lent. Our Liturgy of the Holy Eucharist Rite II will begin with a penitential order, page 351. We will immediately move to 350 and then go back to the bottom of 351. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. And endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is the only Lord. Mm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 356. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body mm. and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages 
as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you task the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Oreb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Hmm. And hope does not disappoint us hmm. because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we still, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Through perhaps a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we are still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will be, be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will, will we be saved <coughs> by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Thanks be Lord Lord to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. Hmm. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, mm -hmm. a woman mm -hmm. of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God mm. and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, mm -hmm. and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Mm. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and mm. come back. Mm. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Hmm. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, hmm. the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or, why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat 
that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. <coughs> and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. Mm. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this truly is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Don't forget your water bottles. We heard this every day as we were ready to get on the bus. We were off to a work day at Remember, the organization that works with the Lakota Sioux on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. We were about to go out to dig pit toilets, skirt trailers, and install bunk beds with the Native Americans living there on the res. South Dakota's weather is notably unpredictable. It was early September and the temperatures were hovering in the low 90s. So that water bottle was pretty crucial. The dry wind coming off the Badlands didn't make it feel quite so hot, so you could get dehydrated pretty fast from the wind as well as the heat. I got on the bus and I took my seat and I realized that my water bottle was only about a third full. But I thought, oh well, that'll be enough to get me through the day. It wasn't. We got back from a busy day skirting a trailer, digging around in the dirt underneath the trailer and putting up a wooden frame and nailing board over that so that the wicked wind in the winter wouldn't blow underneath the trailer. That would save the family up to $300 a month in propane costs for heating. A real blessing. I felt good dusty, dirty, and tired, and my body desperately needed water, though I didn't really feel thirsty. But I got back to the bunkhouse, and I filled my empty water bottle with clear, cold water from the faucet, and I took a sip. Suddenly, I was desperate to drink. I drank the entire bottle full. I ran the water again and filled the bottle, and I drank the whole thing again. I filled it again, and I drank until I could drink no more. 20 minutes later, I was thirsty again, desperately thirsty. I drank again a full bottle and then another full bottle. All that water did not satisfy. Jesus is in Samaria, where they do not worship in the Jerusalem temple and are considered anathema to the Jews. But he gets to the well of Jacob near the city of Sychar and is thirsty. There's a woman there filling her water jug at of all times, noon. Now, most women would fill their water jugs in the morning 
before their chores began. Filling water jugs was a social activity as much as a needful one, where the women would gather around the well, chatting, sharing the news of the day. But why this woman gathering water at noon? Now, some scholars think it was that she was shunned by the other women because she was a woman of not necessarily great virtue. Maybe she just ran out of water and needed more. For whatever reason, she was there, and so was Jesus, and he asked her for a drink. She's surprised. He's a Jew, she's a Samaritan. She's a woman, he's a man. She can't really believe that he's speaking to her. Interestingly, it's the longest exchange Jesus has with any one person in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. And it's with a woman and with a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And he offers her the greatest gift possible, living water. Living water that will never leave you thirsty again. Oh, does she want that water. The idea of not having to come to draw water every day is extraordinarily attractive. Those water jets weigh a ton, and when they're full of water, they weigh even more. She talks to him, and the more she talks to him, she realizes he's not talking about water. He's talking about something else entirely different. It doesn't matter if she's a Samaritan or a Jew. God is spirit and seeks those who believe. He sees right through her, noting that she has had five husbands and the man she's living with now is not her husband. She knows of the Messiah to come. He tells her that she is looking right at him. <coughs> she leaves her job, maybe a third fall. And, he goes, and she goes to the city and begins telling everyone she encounters about the Messiah out by Jacob's well. Now, the disciples come back and try to urge him to eat, but Jesus says, oh no. They don't question why he was talking to a woman, let alone a Samaritan. But he says to them, I have food that you don't know about. He says, my food is to do the will of he who sent me and to complete his work because he is full of joy of having done the will of his father, having touched the life of this woman, who has gone on into the city to spread the word of his messiahship, his Christ nature, his mission. Jesus had the extraordinary experience of being able to convert this woman, this Samaritan woman, to understanding that he was indeed the Messiah, thereby doing the will of his father in heaven, this was more fulfilling to him than food that would fill his belly. It fulfilled his whole nature. It fulfilled his whole nature. He would carry that sense of fulfillment for a good long while, more than the two days he spent at Sychar. God offers us two essential things, the living water of Christ and the food of doing his will. Christ is the living water himself, not just something he offers. We see this theme not only throughout John, but also in Revelation, when Christ calls us to come and drink at the very end. And at communion every Sunday, we share in the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ in that holy meal that we share in our community of love and embrace. But we're doing his will the Father's will, and it feeds us in ways that have nothing to do with our digestive systems. There's something holy about sharing any kind of meal. At the end of our week at Remember, we shared a meal with the members of the local Lakota Sioux community. It was a sacred time, time out of time, a sharing of gifts and a sharing of love. So, do the Father's will. Mm. Come. Mm. And like the people of Sychar, don't just believe me and my testimony. Believe Christ, the living water. You may not feel like you need it, but one sip will convince you. For you will never again be thirsty, and he will stay with you for more than two days. Mm. And come, eat and drink at the table prepared for you with love to your right and love to your left 
doing the will of your Father in heaven, taking food that will feed you for much longer than you can possibly imagine. Amen. When you're ready and if you're able, I invite you to stand and to join in saying the Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning will be according to Form 1, page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Church of South India, in the diocese cycle of prayer for St. Christopher, Grand Black, and St. Philip's, Bueller, in St. Martin's cycle of prayer for June, Deb, Steve, Travis, Teresa, Sullivan, Oliver, Abby, Eric, Jenny, and Jillian. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Michael, a presiding bishop, a priest, archbishop, for Bernie, Rafer and Moses, the Bishop of a Companion Diocese, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and for Craig, the Bishop of this Amy Synod of the ELCA. For the Diocese
Jonathan Cannon's mission and Tracy and Val for this gathering and for all priests and deacons, especially the clergy associated with this parish, Mary, Pat, Rick and Mike. For Julian and all others discerning vocation to ordain or lay ministry, for our vestry and for all those seeking a deeper knowledge of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our President, and Gretchen, our Governor, for the leaders of all nations and for all in authority, give them wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Kalamazoo County, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve and protect it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all who are aging, who find their bodies having more and more limitations. Give them peace and patience, to accept their bodies and natural changes, and give them joy and laughter with their loved ones and caregivers. For those on your prayer list, Alan, Amelia, Yongdeleya, Shemini, Shonana, Joel, Lori, Oswaldo, Chris, Frank, Christopher, Juliana, Karen, Sean, Donna, Jean, Penny, Tony, David, Christopher, Jean, Marjorie, Curtis, Michelle, Kate, Deb, Dee, and Molly. And for those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For those recently diagnosed with breast cancer who have asked for our prayers. Charlotte, Donald, Lydia, Mary, Laura, Judy, Sheila, Megan, Carol, Kristen, Kim, Stephanie, Rebecca, Rebecca, Courtney, Jean, Heidi, Christina, Patricia, Penny, Teresa, Tanya, Brenda, Janet, Marilyn, Sana, and Elizabeth. For the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, and for all those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the, for the unemployed and the destitute, for the prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from terrorism, racism, and religious persecution, for the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and derogation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Martin of Tours and all the saints, let us recommend let us commend ourselves and one, on, and one another and all our lives to Christ our Lord. To you, to you O Lord, our God. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. shall we respond to God's great love? We shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our souls, with all our minds, and with all our strength. And we shall love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Sixty-seven. 
If you're able, please stand. The Lord be with you. and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, 
according to his command, O Father. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Martin of Tours and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ.
perhaps to the better of them. Carry the body of Christ, the better of them. Stand in the body of Christ, the better of them.
you're able, please stand for the post communion <coughs> prayer, page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated unless you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary and would like to come forward for prayer and a blessing. Dr. Phillips. Yes. Yes. Four score and 15. Four score and 15. Mm. You are incredible. <laughs> you are, not just because of age. May I put my hands on your head? Please do. Please join me in praying for wow. Dr. Romeo Phillips. Wow. I only remember how it begins. <laughs> Watch over your child, O oh Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wow. You have the opportunity, not the mandate, to tell us the best thing about this past year and your hope for the coming year. If you would do that at the microphone, we would appreciate it. I don't know if my McCurry knows, but it's the worst thing in the world to give someone who earned his living by talking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, last year, this year was quite a year for me. I lost Pat. But the pleasant thing was, last Saturday I was able to marry off my first grandson. Mm. Oh. Oh. Very much <laughs> On a sour note of sorts, I haven't lived 95 years. I thought perhaps the situation socially in this country among people, both of us, about aunts, African ancestors would be better. But it seemed that one administration will make a move forward, the next one come in and pull it back. Mm -hmm. But there are good people like those of you here at St. Martha's of Tours and also St. Barnabas who are keeping the faith. Come on. Thank you very much. Able, please stand and let's praise God for Dr. Phillips. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. for the good of the body, in which case, please come to the microphone. This is your anti-racism moment. My watch wants to know if I fell. I, fell. I did not fall. Uh, this is your anti-racism moment for uh, the next couple weeks. We're doing two simultaneous trainings uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then next week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. 
One is a regional training for Southwest Michigan. We'll do online. And the other will be for the state of Michigan. I know some people get tired of me talking about anti-racism, but not you guys. As Dr. Phillips said, y'all are, you know, you're in it to win it. Uh, we'll be training the state of Michigan uh, Department of Health and Human Services. As always, I cover your prayers. I know when you pray, we do better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a note on Easter Sunday, um, we uh, are planning on having an Easter egg hunt after church for the children. Uh, Becky Searles will be in charge of that, but if anybody would like to donate candy for that Easter egg hunt uh, or help to hide the eggs, the children are all on board on helping to stuff the eggs, but they don't want to hide them so that they can look for them. <laughs> so if somebody would be willing to help to hide the eggs on Easter morning, please talk to Becky. Uh, just a note on candy if you'd like to donate some. Um, Per the size of eggs that we have, they need to be the fun sized, very small size candy, such as Hershey Kisses or Hugs, or the very small Reese's, um, something individually wrapped, not jelly beans, nothing that's going, that's anybody would be touching while they're putting um, egg candy in the eggs. Okay, so let, let Becky know if you'd like to help out with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The newsletter was wrong. My fault. No way. <laughs> um, I announced that the men's lunch would be tomorrow, and it in fact was last week. So the next time the men will gather for lunch at West Main Pub, Main Street Pub, is in April. So if you go tomorrow, you may or may not be eating by yourself. <laughs> Please stand for the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
are serving on Lori's sermon feedback team. We will meet in here in just a few minutes. Seeking always that living water, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.